Thanks for listening to the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast, where each week we talk about a free piece or two of technology that you can use in your classroom. I'm your host, Shannon Martin. I'm a middle school teacher, technology coach, and personalizer and coordinator for my district. And I'm a producer slash husband, Fuzz Martin. And it's season two. Wow, wow, wow. Season Air two horns. of the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast. We're back. We are back. Which means the summer is over. Sad tear. Wah, 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 it's not wah. quite over, but we're getting there. We're I'm gonna... kind of excited for the colder weather. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a really know, nice sweatshirt that. that I bought from work, <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to wearing it. <laughs> So if it could just drop below 70 for a week, that'd be cool with me. I'm definitely a four seasons person. I need... I'm definitely a cool season person and travel to warmer places when it's... When it's cold out. That time. I'm thinking about uh, moving us to Nova Scotia. What do you think mm. of that? No thanks. Nova thanks. Nova thanks. I think, you know, get out of, uh, mm. get out of the country for a little bit, get some culture. Oh, that would be fine, but not moving there. Yeah, we can go visit. Maybe the Arctic Circle. No, just too above. Cold. Four mm. seasons. I don't mind a little summer. Like I like the warmth of summer, but I definitely fall is still my favorite. Aw. Mm. Okay. Okay. Speaking of fall. <sighs> school year. It's time it's, for school year. Starting. Season two beginning right now. Yeah. We're, it's fun. Uh, we're I'm excited. excited. I've got I'm a excited about good school year for you. You've got yeah. some plans for this year's season. Yeah, uh, this year's like season, like this year's school year. Um, this season on the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast, um, while I, I will continue doing free websites because that is my passion is finding free mm-hmm. things to help out teachers. Yes. But I'm going to have a few of my podcasts will be focused specifically on subjects. So while I like to keep things general so everybody can use everything, I also think that it would be helpful because I have in my pocket a whole bunch of websites for science teachers and a whole bunch of websites for language arts teachers so um, and music and all kinds of stuff. So, so maybe some subject-specific podcasts mm-hmm. to kind of help out everyone with their little niche in which they work in. Absolutely. And I've got one hand in my pocket and the, and the other, other one's, one's holding a peace sign. Nice. Thanks, Alanis. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'll be here all weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay. So we're starting off season two. Yeah. With a little bit of googly things. Googly. And Great. googly moogly. I I just ran a workshop today myself and some of my staff members. We have our, our Google certification and we're helping out other staff in the district. And so I was like, you know what? I'd like to do a few Google things just because it's fun and I use it every day. By no means am I a Google expert. There are lots of people out there that know way more than me about Google. Yeah. Um, That's why I usually don't focus on Google stuff. You are Google level one, right? Yeah, I'm certified level one. This is my little team and we're working mm -hmm. and we're going to work towards level two this year. Okay. (laughs) In all our spare time. Those uh, tests are legit. They are hard. (laughs) And like, they like keep a camera on you and you... Yeah. Uh, you're yeah. not allowed to... And like you can use this stuff every day. Like absolutely do I use, I, you know, live and breathe Google every day, but being tested on stuff, it's a little different because you may not go or answer things the exact same way that everybody, anyway, it's just interesting. But I, I felt accomplished the first time. We're going to try a second time to get certified level two, but it's stuff that we like to use. And I, I mean, we use a lot of things in, in school and in our district and most districts are, um, like said on the Google platform, but I know there's a lot of people that are like just Google experts and they have so many cool ideas. So I'm just sharing a few of our little tips and tricks that we do in our little small town of Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, and then there's actually, along with some of our tips and tricks, there is um, some fun things I picked up over the summer that I was paying attention to and some ex- Chrome extensions and stuff. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today too. Great. Uh, Google Chrome extensions. So yes, it's all Google. It is all Google today, all the time, which is rare for me to do. Fun little fact for you. Yes, we're starting to move ourselves away. So, um, part owner at an ad agency, we mm-hmm. have uh, about ninety employees, and we run. We have been running 
we're we're a Google shop, so we have um, googly things. We have the googly things, all our email addresses. <laughs> you know, we have Google Drive. We're starting to get more in you know in line with using Google because it's mm-hmm. come a long way. Mm-hmm. It was not comparable to Microsoft Word for a while. Right, because I was more business focused. Right. right? Mm -hmm. But now Microsoft Word's going to this model where you have to pay monthly for Office 365. So we have new people coming in and they get a new computer. That computer, you can't just buy a copy of Microsoft Word. You have to buy Office 365. And now pretty soon it's starting to cost us like $2,000 a month to have Hmm. everybody on Microsoft. So, this business world teachers get a better right yeah yeah on. it's the business world yeah, yes okay. um so we are starting to move all of our documents mm-hmm. to google <gasps> cool in fact just today like my last meeting of the day we were talking about we're finally at the point where we can do our um our uh sheets for when we're doing uh estimates and things like that mm-hmm. we can do them in a google slides presentation mm-hmm. exported as pdf mm-hmm. and Everybody can work in it and collaborate, mm-hmm. and then look at you. Yeah, so we're starting to get all googly, all googly. Nice. So this stuff has merit way outside the classroom. Oh, absolutely. And it's interesting that you say that because a lot of times I feel like when kids are in in high school classes and stuff, the business teachers like, well, you need to know Word because that's where business is, and it's true. There's a lot of businesses there that still run Word, is. yes. But the fact that the shift is happening. I think a lot of people coming into the work world are super familiar with Google too. Yeah, we're so. in a ad agency, so we're a little bit more lax. I mean, we have dogs at work, and yeah, you know, you got dogs at work. We you get pancakes have too on cookouts and <laughs> leave early for happy hour, those kinds of things. So it's different. It's different than an accounting office, right? But. Who knows, you know, we're yeah, kind of the first forward. movers and things right. kind of tend to stem from there. So. Cool. Well, that's fun. That's Well, exciting. let's get into it. Yeah, let's talk about some actual, I mean, things. Not that we're not talking about some actual, actual things. Some actual, yeah. And it, because the first one is so important. I have picked the most important little Google tip and trick <laughs> to go first. Is this um, emojis? Yeah. <laughs> because... Uh, Super important. Yes. I taught so you this. So you taught me this, and then yeah. I didn't realize how how broad yeah. this could go. So, mm-hmm. okay. if You you I, taught me a few things after the ones that I taught you, yeah. too. So. so, I mean, it works. So, some of you, I'm sure a lot of you already know this. I, I just didn't realize the, the scope of what I was capable of doing. So, if <laughs> you, I mean. You're in you, Gmail. You're in Gmail. Okay. You're in your email. You're in your email. You and got you, your folders. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not your folders. In your email, it's actually called your labels. Uh, yeah. So, you know. Um, on your labels, on the left-hand side. But you might call side, them folders, but, but they're, they're really labels, labels if you want to be On the left-hand side of your <laughs> Gmail account. Yes. And when you're typing in a new label. or The labels you, that look like a folder structure, yep. They look like little arrows. Yeah. Anyway, so you can, you know, change your label color, which everybody knows this. And yeah. That's great. So if you want to edit your label, you click on edit and you can change the name of your label. Mm-hmm. But did you know that if you go to like Emojipedia or any of the places where you can pull little emojis, if you're on your phone or if you're on an iPad where your emojis are already easily, you know, Do you access. not know how to access your emojis on your computer? No. Oh my gosh. Am I going to teach you something live? <laughs> you All are. Right. What you want to do is you want to hit control. Mm-hmm. If you're on a Mac, you're this on is a on Mac. a Mac, okay? Yeah. So if a PC, I don't know the answer to. Hit control, mm-hmm. command, and your space bar. Mm-hmm. <gasps> there and there are. is your... You know what? I feel like you did teach this to me before. Yeah. I just didn't fully listen to you. Because yeah, so, so the you were first time me... you taught me this, Yeah. you could do it because you can do it on a Mac. But I wanted to be able to do it on a Chromebook. Okay. So I could show my kids. I think that's why There's I There's got to be a shortcut, though, on a Chromebook. Sure, well, I know. And I'm sure once I show the kids, it'll be a thing. Anyway, so we digress. Why don't digressed. you just ask the kids what the I'm shortcut sure is for emojis? Because they know. <laughs> they know. So anyway. Or ask. You can. Google. <laughs> <laughs> you can put emojis in your labels instead yeah. of having just the person's name. Or instead of having, like, parents, you can put little, like, 
families or if you you could have, have like happy emails smiley and angry fr- emails <laughs> frowny. and you know like your folders within folders if you want to mark them so um yeah i've got teachers that coach sports Mm-hmm. So today, so anyway, today we were in a workshop and basically our workshops when it comes to Google stuff are like, hey, what do you have questions on? Let's show you cool, fun, random things. Right. And then we sorted. So I um, had uh, two people into my workshop that hold over 6,000 emails in their inbox. So we worked on sorting and organizing. And I like to always see the bottom of my inbox. I have to be able to see the picture. Oh. And I sort everything. Everything gets sorted as it comes into my email. Okay. Um, anyway, Don't look at mine. So we were teaching how to put fun emojis in just to like sort your email and do stuff like that. Yep. So I knew you could do it in your email. And then I was having this conversation with one of our other Google teachers. And they're like, oh, yeah, didn't you know you can put the same emojis in your, dr- in your docs and in your folders? So one of our elementary teachers has dogs come in and read with her class. And so oh. like... The dog folder has little doggies on the outside of it because you run out of colors when you're sorting and organizing your folders after a while. Do you know this as well? And you can add other colors to there and combinations of things. You can also, if you do that, you can search by the emoji in the search box in your Google Drive. That's fun because we had the conversation say when you sort your drive, does it put the emojis first or does it put... Or do they oh, I don't know the sort order. The yeah, That's I, what I, we were talking yeah, about Yeah, I'm not today. sure on the sort if order. If you have an answer for sorting with emojis, please shoot us a message. Yeah. <laughs> or we could Google it, I'm sure. <laughs> um, anyway, so this is why like Google things is fun for me. Mm-hmm. I am, again, no expert and always learning about fun Google stuff. But um, emojis, not only can they go in your email, they can go in your docs and in your folders when you need them to. Excellent. It's very important to know these things. One little tip that I've learned, uh, two little tips. One, um, use the, if if there's a type of template that you use, maybe you have a signature on a, uh, like a PDF form that you make, or maybe you do a newsletter. Yeah, newsletters in your classroom or parent letters, things like that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Field trip forms. Oh, yeah, field trip forms. Or maybe you're, um, you want to be, um, Maybe you work for the district, or maybe you want we all the, work district. For the district. Right? Okay. I mean, like <laughs> on the district level, maybe you work on the district level, mm-hmm. and you want uh, to standardize some things. Mm-hmm. So this is something that we do. Is like we have our like if we're copywriting for something, or we have a copy template, or if we're writing a mm-hmm. proposal, we have a proposal template. We have a bunch of different templates for mm-hmm. things. You can save templates. Now, you can save them personally for you as your mm-hmm. own account, or you can request to your district to save something mm-hmm. as a uh, from their temp- template library. Mm-hmm. And then that template will be in there. So it'll be like maybe it's letterhead. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you need something with your school district's letterhead mm-hmm. that you're creating in Google Drive. Mm-hmm. So that can, if you um, submit a new template, yeah, you go can through. go in through that. Mm-hmm. If you're an admin, if you happen to be in the admin side, you mm-hmm. can just create those and then put them in the template library for the and rest your of your li- district. Library. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, and you can control access to whomever gets to use that. Mm-hmm. The other cool part is, and one of the, my biggest gripes with Google Drive is the the uh, file sorting and where mm-hmm. f- files go, file structure. Yeah. Um, and it's gotten better over I the say, years. What's the problem with it? I yeah, it's gotten better over the years. But it, it had been like everything goes into my drive, and then you gotta like if you have folders within your drive. Well, you're right. And then your folders within your folders, and then your folders. And we use a lot of folders. shared drives mm-hmm. now, which used to be called team drives, and mm-hmm. now they've changed them to shared drives within the last three or so months. Mm-hmm. But if you go into a, whatever drive or folder you want, mm-hmm. go to new, and then if you go to like let's say. Um, uh, Google Docs. Mm-hmm. If you hover over the arrow, it'll say create a new document mm-hmm. or select from template. Mm-hmm. You select from the template. It'll say the template name up in the um, file name, but if you just change it mm-hmm. to whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. and then it'll tell you if you're in that folder, it'll save it into that folder. Okay. So, so you don't have all... to like go and move it gotcha. or click and drag it from and your, like your drive. It. So it's 
automatically sorted to where you need to go. And it saves a lot of time and cool. then you've got that file that's already formatted in the format that you want. Sweet. Boom. Fun. Look at you. Googly googly man. Yeah. Yay. Um, googly. So next great googly random googly. Google tip again. I'm sure lots of people know it, but kind of came out like the summer where everyone's like, hey, did you know? And then I've been using it all summer. So the hey, did you know, um, if you take a picture on your phone yes. and then upload it to your drive, it a picture on your phone. Let's try that again. When you're handwriting notes and you take a picture of them, if you put them in your drive and you decide to open that picture, that PDF, well, the picture in a doc, the doc will take about a minute mm-hmm. and it twirls and twirls and twirls and then magic happens and your handwriting becomes a typed document in Google. Yes, Google. and it's very good. It's fantastic. My I, handwriting is not good. And, and it, it can do it. does a good job with my handwriting. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm usually very much a, a paperless person, but this mm-hmm. summer I've had to do a lot of transfer of numbers and percentages and while i could i do split screen it sometimes i was just like you know what, it's just easier to write a notebook so i was writing down all my information in my notebook mm-hmm. i took my pictures and there was percentages and numbers and all kinds of stuff and the magic of google took all of my beautifully not that beautiful handwritten <laughs> notes and we had them all set up in a doc and it was amazing so we use it all the time for um thanks to you for yeah, because I showed you the tip and trick at home. You did. Um, the we do a lot of writing on whiteboards, and we do a lot of taking pictures of whiteboards, and then somebody spends a lot of time <laughs> in the past taking our whiteboard notes and turning them into a Google Notes drive or mm-hmm. a Google um, Doc that mm-hmm. we share as notes. Mm-hmm. Now, as you were saying. Mm-hmm. You upload that fold that file to your Google Drive. Mm-hmm. You into write, whatever folder you want to. Just any upload folder, it, yep. like organize it to where you want it to go. Right click it. Yep. Click open as doc as a Google yep. Doc. Yep. And when it's you right do that, top. like like you said, it'll spin for a little bit. Uh huh. And you have to be a little patient because if you have a lot of writing or if it cannot quite read your writing, it takes yep. a little more time. Mm-hmm. But it even tries to like even does the color like if we yeah. write in different colors yeah. it'll do the different colors yeah when i use like pen like sometimes yeah. it shows up like green and purple too yeah mm-hmm. so it's really helpful you just and when you're taking the picture be conscious of how you're taking the picture i guess like make sure there's not and when you're writing handwriting <laughs> just, just write <laughs> write a little slower <laughs> but yeah it's kind of cool so i i was reading about it over the summer like oh my gosh i'm gonna try it doesn't really work and then it did and i'm like okay well great all these things that i've been like note taking or like sitting out on the deck taking notes or like yeah. I, you know doing stuff they're all beautiful google docs now they at are. the start of the school year and it's amazing mm-hmm. um i'll screenshot some things and put them on the web page so you guys can kind of see how to set that up awesome awesome so we got pictures We've got emojis. I mean, really important things. Now, the most important, especially with the goggles that you have on right now. Thank you. Because we're going into keep. Yes. And the one schnaz, not one, just two little schnazzy things. So Google Keep. Goggle Keep. Goggle Keep. Um, I use Google Keep a lot for podcast stuff. Okay. And for my reading groups at school. All right. Which is random. But Google Keep has dark mode now nice is yeah. it only a mac maybe oh no, no. it'd be on chrome and it's stuff anywhere too. you you can just go into your settings and you switch it to dark mode google keep has dark mode so when it's 12 o'clock at night you're like oh my gosh i had 12 o'clock at night 12 o'clock in the morning i guess because yeah. at night you wouldn't it would be like lunchtime <laughs> you wouldn't need dark anyway so as you're sitting there like half asleep and yeah. you're like i have a note and i want to put this in my keep and it can be dark mode so you totally won't wake up but that note will be in your keep, and it'll be better for your eyesight. Yeah, it will be. You function in dark mode all the time for everything. I, I do. I, I use do dark not. mode and everything. Um, so Google Keep dark mode, and you've always been able to draw in Keep, um, because I've done it before. But it just seems nicer now that there's more options and stuff with drawing. Okay. Um, you can and in settings, there's the you can see it in like list mode versus like laid out mode a little differently but sure but keep keep they've made some 
fun little updates too. So good. Um, that's my keep spiel. Keep, good spiel. Keep and spiel. Glockenspiel. Um, and I wanted to throw out there today while I was doing my little Google training with staff that we've talked about Tour Builder in the past. Back, right. Uh, season one, episode four. Four, four, four. We talked about Tour Builder and we talked about the fabulous Trisha Lewis too at that time. Oh, yeah. And today I was having a really great conversation with a first grade teacher because I was introducing Tour Builder to some people. And... What she's going to do is take some stories that the first graders do as read-alouds. Okay. And then in the back part, they get like the nonfiction background of their story. And she's going to put the nonfiction background information into a tour builder. So that way the kids can see like where the story is based from, where their characters traveled through. And so they get a sense of like where... In the actual world, it sets place, and then she's going to put pictures from the book into it, and like kind of the background of the story. Yeah. And I thought, what a cool way! Like I always talk about how students can use Tour Builder, but as a teacher, using that as a tool to share with your students and create yeah. background and stuff, I thought it was a really cool idea. So, that's um, cool. Tour Builder can be used for so many things, and not just having students do projects and stuff like we talked about college tours and stuff like that but actual like here's some background information and then as a teacher you have that set up for years to come you know you know right recreating recreating that so i thought that was pretty cool yeah nice touch yeah anyway our last tip and trick today okay because i feel like there's a lot of little things it's just like fun little things yeah. we're getting back in the groove i don't know how we're gonna write this up on the blog post googly things <laughs> Googly things. Googly things. Google. Googly things that are fun. If and we put Google in the uh, the ed tech directory, people are going to be like, yeah, you're reach. <laughs> Googly things? <laughs> nah, we can put stuff in there. There'll be things. Anyway, this is an actual thing that you can actually do. All right. In your Googly things. Tangible. It is a... Plugin. For Chrome. It is a plugin for Chrome. <laughs> I'm trying to process that. Um, it is an extension, actually. That's why it's an extension. Oh, an extension. Okay. It's an extension. It is called eComments. Okay. Okay. So this is kind of schnazzy. eComments, it's like little e dash big comments. Okay. Is a Chrome extension. And what it does, once you put it into your computer, onto your computer, is it goes into every time you open a Google document, you have this extension put in. You can turn it on or off, so it's not always in your face, which is nice. Okay. And what it does as a teacher, when you are reading through student work, it gives you all of the comments you could possibly need for commenting and editing a student paper that is written. So if someone, like if a kid wrote a doc, they're writing a research paper, you can highlight the section. And then when you hover over, there's like all these little, like it's divided up by like modifiers, adverbs, prepositions. And then there's punctuation, spelling rules, comments, um, title comments, nouns, verbs. So it gives you all the breakdown for grammar. Yeah. And it's set by standard, and it's divided up like three, six, six, nine, oh, like nine, twelve. It's like set up by grade level. Yeah. And then you hover over the standards, and then you click on it, and it drops it in as a comment. It tells you how it should be edited, and then gives you examples of how to edit, or like just example sentences of what it should look like. But what's super cool, like not only does it give you the one thing I have, I was a little leery of, like, oh, they're yeah. canned comments. And as teachers, they're awesome for saving time, but sometimes it's not quite meeting what you need it to. Right. You can click on it, hover over it, and you can edit them. Oh, cool. And then if you've edited it, you don't like it, you can revert back to the original. That's nice. So you're able to then put your own comments in, and they can be specific, like standard specific comments with your own thoughts in there, too. And then on top of all of that, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can add your own categories. You could import information, export information, and like switch up different sets. So if you're switching up grade levels of comments, you can mm -hmm. change it right in the document. So you have all of these options to edit student work with specific examples and 
like actual background definitions and all this kind of stuff. Nice. And then yeah. You have the option if you want to. There's a little camera or a microphone. You can put audio comments oh, in. Oh, cool. So if you have kids with modifications or if they're struggling or if they need a boost from you, you can put a video comment in and be like, hey, this is an amazing paper. And they can actually see your face. And then the, like your video comment is left into that document. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. And it's all free. Nice. Yeah. You just download the extension and put it on your Chromebook. So it's called your, E-comments. It's E-comments. And Beautiful. they're amazing. Yeah. And what a time saver when you're editing right. papers. And I think it's cool that you can edit and then videotape yourself too. Like, hey, this is amazing. Great job on your project. Like, how cool is that? <laughs> so, I don't know. I thought it was really sweet. So, yeah. That is pretty sweet. So, those are my googly things. Nice googly things, Shanna. Googly things. I got yawny right there for a second. You did. It was, well, it's 10.30 at night while we're recording this. This is true. Because the little one took a little bit too long to get to bed tonight. She got up three times. Yeah. Because, well, because she saw the microphones out. That's why. Right. <laughs> she knew. She's like, oh, man. I need Season to talk, two, right? Right. Time for me to stay awake. Oh, folks. man. Season two, I'm all in. Nice. Yay! Yay, we did it. Episode one, season Episode two. Episode one, season two. Thanks for tuning in. This has been the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast. If you ever have any questions, you can find me on Twitter at SmartNWI. And if you want to get more information on the links to the technology discussed in the episode, you can visit SmartNWI.com. You can see, hear me. You can hear me on Twitter. Try again. Yeah, we can. You can t- tweet me on Twitter. <laughs> you know, or Facebook. New episodes each it's week. Okay, she already in my DMs. Thanks for listening. No. Go educate and innovate. This is the disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> the ideas and opinions expressed in this podcast and the Smart and WI website are those of the author Shanna Martin and not of her employer. Prior to using any of the technologies discussed in this podcast, please consult with your employer regulations. This podcast offers no guarantee that these tools will work for you as described, but we hope they do. And we will catch you again next week. Adios. Adios and enjoy your first weeks of school. Bye.